You must understand that it's never too late to realize that something's missing. Things have been out of whack lately. Uh, uh -huh. Let's just say I've been having more and more of these dreams. They weren't my usual genocidal nightmares, but they weren't good signs either. Regardless, these dreams became part of my daily routine. Huh? Wait, what's going on here? Greeted by the moon, I would walk pensively through the woods, brushed by an array of floating leaves. And then... Uh, uh, what the... A hooded figure would appear from the shadows, its face unseen by the naked eye. Who are you? And why are you watching me? Uh, uh, what? What happened? What are you mumbling this early in the morning? Nothing. I just had another dream again. Let me guess. Another genocidal nightmare? No, thank God, too. I haven't had that nightmare for ages. I think it's a good sign. Hmm. And you've been turning into a mini smiley every day. I mean, you've been tossing and turning almost every night till you fall to the floor. That's a bad sign. I am not. I just get too deep in my head sometimes. Besides, Sans has been more motivated lately. He's my physics teacher, remember? I could care less what that smiley trash bag does. I'm sorry, did you say something? No, so sorry. <laughs> my name is Frisk. I'm an average 17-year-old teenager living a pretty normal life on the surface like everyone else. But there's something that sets me apart from some kids my age. Hmm? Good morning, Sans. Hey, kiddo, what's up? I live with a new monster family up here on the surface now. Uh, duh. Many Sans here had another nightmare again. What do you think happened, Smiley? Not much. Just another good sleep. So good, in fact, that I fell off the bed for no reason. <laughs> Sounds like you had a bad time. But in all seriousness, are you doing all right? Yeah, I just had another weird dream again. Hmm, that's so. It wasn't that dream again, was it? No, thank God it wasn't. I haven't had that dream for months. Really? That's awesome, kiddo. But what made it weird anyways? Well... Mm. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, guess when all said and dine, your stomach does the talking, huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Flowey! Human Sans Flowey, the great papyrus and Queen Toriel, would like to inform you that today's breakfast is almost ready. We hope you're ready for an unforgettable experience. <laughs> well, there goes the great papyrus breakfast alarm. You know, I'm pretty hungry myself. How's about we talk later and chow down before we become all skin and bone? Sounds good to me. Sans, if that's another one of your puns, you can forget about seconds. Get your filthy, bony fingers away from me, Smiley. Hmm, this is so good. I'm glad you do like it. Truth be told, the Papyrus did most of the work. Toriel speaks the truth. I, the great Papyrus, aimed to please. And no kitchen equipment was harmed in the process. He's really improved. All I did was stand by if he needed help. I'm so proud. And so, the morning proceeds normally like any other day. Everyone in the household seems to be in good spirits. And my suffering. Even Flowey's in good spirits. So good, in fact, that he's having a hard time containing himself. So, what you got planned for today, bucko? I'm meeting with some friends at Grillby's for a study and video game session today. <laughs> nice. Frisk, as your master chef and great uncle Papyrus, I support your plans to meet with your friends to discuss your human studies. What I don't understand is why you must meet them at that grease hole of all places. Ah, oh, come on, Paps. It ain't always a grease hole there. Well, it is to me. Want to come to Grillby's with me, Flowey? I wouldn't go to that grease hole even if you said please. Maybe he'll get tired of waiting for Smiley to pay his tab and move on up. Flowey. What? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> the only grease hole here is your lack of respect. Yes, Master Dunkel. With that attitude, he was asking for it anyway. Well said, my apprentice. Shall we give poor little Flowey a bad time? Oh, God! No! A while later. 
Well, here we are. Nice shortcut to Grubbs' place, eh, kiddo? Well, yeah, your shortcuts are awesome, but... Next, you're gonna ask me, Dunkle Sands, why are we in a smelly back alley? Well, at least I don't have to repeat myself. By the way, you sounded nothing like me. Well, to answer your question, buddy old pal, this smelly back alley was the only closest shortcut I could find. Besides, trash bags are the life of the party, right? Trash bags also contain materials that affect the environment and can also cause global warming. But trash like this can easily be reused. Even the trash that fell into the waterfall could be reused. People just throw things away without thinking, and they don't even care. I hear you, buddo. Trash can do anything, including acting as compost for your garden, utensils, and even machine parts. Aye, there she be, Grilby's Bar, off the pork bow. All right. And so, another normal day in my life begins. Or, so I thought. These news reports are all the same. Work's becoming real trash. I can't stop using it. They feel something's wrong. And no one else is even noticing. Wait a minute, is that... You've got to be kidding me. Why the hell are they here? Uh... Uh, what the heck was that? Huh? Hey, 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 what's going on down there? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> you just fell for my new scare the fudge out of the kiddo trick. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> But, uh, all joking aside, are you doing okay, buddy? You look like you've seen a ghost. And I'm not talking about naps to look here. Wait, you didn't see them? I could have sworn I saw some weird person in a cloak walking by right over there. What do you mean, Frisk? <sighs> Never mind. I was probably just seeing things. Sorry. Kid? <sighs> hey, cheer up, buddy. You know why your head's playing tricks on you. Because you're probably hungry, right? Hunger and lightheadedness can do that to you, you know? Besides, I know you're just itching to sink your teeth into some Grillby's burgers and fries. That'd make you feel better. Yeah, you're probably right. Plus, the study session will help me work down to the bone. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now you're talking, see? You ain't got nothing to worry about today. Now, after you, kiddo. Why, thank you, good sir. Hmm. What was that about? To be continued. Anyway, as I was saying, that was a pretty damn fast shortcut if I do say so myself. Hey, hey people! What's happening? If you're looking for the boss, you just missed him. Mr. Grillby's on break. <laughs> well, shoot. So now we're gonna play the good old waiting game, huh? Okies. Oh, I'm an old pro at it anyways. So, BP. How have things been for you lately? Eh, okay, I suppose. Still don't care for the restaurant business, but this is better than dealing with Metaton, I guess. Speaking of which, some of your friends have been asking for you, little buddy. I told them I'd be on the lookout for you and let you know when you arrive. They're over there, at that table by the wall. Really? Who? Hey, Frisk! Over here! Sup, dude? We've been waiting for you. Name, Monster Kid, MK. Age, 16, Reptilian. One of Frisk's best friends. Wears a striped shirt. Papyrus's number one fan. Hey, Frisk, Mr. Sands. How have you two been lately? Name, Zinnia, Mia, McDowell. Age, 17. Soul trait, patience. One of Frisk's human friends. Bookworm. Hey, MK. Hey, Mia. I'll be there in a sec. All right, Dunkle. I'm going to hang out with my friends over there. All right, cool beans. Have fun, kiddo. If you need anything, let me know. Okay. Frisk, dude, you did bring your DS with you, right? Uh, hold on, MK. We barely even got started studying. <laughs> Ta-da! I can't ever leave home without it. Come on, who do you take me for? Basic etiquette conditions have been met. You're filled with consistency and determination. Dang, dude, that's hardcore. So no one cares about studying? Your charisma might be too amazing. Hey, don't worry. We didn't forget the study session, Mia. We'll get it done just as fast as Dunkle can spout a thousand puns per minute. A thousand? Isn't that an unnaturally high number? No way, yo. This is Sands we're talking about. He's a frickin' pun master, dude. No joke, sister. It's actually pretty funny when he spouts so many puns. It's like he's speaking in some weird alien language. 
Come on, he's got to have some limit to how many puns he can spout. <laughs> nope. Once he starts, you can't make him stop. Ten. Oh, God, nine, no. Please, eight, no. Shut seven, up. Seven, Don't you freaking dare, Bonehead. I'm five, dead serious. Three, two, one. But, 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 no, Frisk, I like those archer friends. I don't know them. They're dangerous. They're complete strangers. Help me! Don't leave me all alone! A few minutes later. So, Mr. Sands wants us to create a scenario that involves the chaos theory, right? What do you think we should do for the assignment, Frisk? Well, he said the scenario could be as simple or complex as we wanted it, so... Um, let me think. My thinking process is probably gonna take a bit. Got any ideas, MK? Oh, I don't know, dude. You're better at this stuff than I am. <sighs> An idea pops into your head which fills you with determination. I got it! What if our scenario involves a scientist who conducts a time travel project to visit the early 1900s? So what do you think? Well, there might be some tweaks we can make for this scenario, but otherwise your idea is pretty sound. There's one problem, though. What do you mean? I think we broke MK's brain. <laughs> Make wait. Make the world stop, please. I think my idea turned into a sermon. Well, we are on the right track. I think now's a good time to take a break. Sounds like a reboot is required. Yeah, we got time to work more on this later. Is it lunchtime yet? I could really go for a burger and some video games now. Well, we did get a lot of work done in the last hour or so. So I think it's safe to assume that we deserve to eat lunch and goof off. I'll get us three orders of burgers and fries. Then we can play. Don't forget the milkshakes. No lunch is complete without milkshakes. We'll split the check later. Sounds good to me. Be right back. <laughs> <sighs> oh, sweet ketchup. How I missed your taste. It's a shame BP couldn't take my 1,000-pun bomb, though. Most people would roll on the floor laughing. Is that so? I wouldn't deny it, especially since my customers never get tired of your puns. Grilbs, my man, how are things? Good, I suppose. Apart from the fact you're currently mooching me off my ketchup stock again. Oh, come on, Grilbs, I never mooch out of your stock. I mean, I've been getting closer to paying off my tab every day, right? Yes, and by that, you only provided a few cents. Huh? Why is Burger Pants knocked out on the floor? Eh, he screamed at the top of his lungs and also suffered an overdose of puns. In other words, it was your fault, wasn't it? Hey, is Sans giving you a hard time, Mr. Grillby? I'd be happy to keep him under control if you want. Ah, hello, Frisk. You look well. And don't worry, I can assure you I can handle this troublemaker as naturally as I breathe air. <laughs> oh god, I've been wounded. Could my friends and I have three orders of burgers, fries, and some shakes, please? Absolutely. I'll get started on your meal straight away, then. Just be sure to keep an eye on your boneheaded troublemaker while I'm gone. Roger. So, I overheard your idea for your team's chaos theory scenario for next class. Pretty impressive. Well, I did learn from the best. Not everyone can understand quantum physics, but your classes somehow make the subject easy to understand. Glad to hear it. I mean, they don't call me the head of physicist for nothing, you know. But, uh, while we're waiting on Grilbs to come back, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. I mean, you're not in trouble or anything, but still, it's about what happened earlier today. The whole thing with some person in a cloak and that blackout you had. Is there something bothering you? Yes. I'd be lying if I said no. All that weird stuff happening to me lately is all true. But right now, I just want to enjoy my day without worrying about anything. You get me, right? Of course I get you, kiddo. I want you to enjoy your day too, but I also want to make sure you're doing okay, you know? We both know your determination heightens your senses and lets you see things a lot of people can't. And of course, you know you can always talk to me when something's bothering you. I know you want to be with your friends right now, I get that. But I want you to understand that I'm not telling you all this to lecture you or be a pain in your tailbone. I'm only checking up on you because I care about you, kiddo. And I just want to help you. We all do. Just keep that in mind, okay? Okay, I will. Uh, sorry, I killed the mood, didn't I? <sighs> no, it's okay. I know you're just trying to help me. I really appreciate it. But you did say I didn't have to worry about anything today, right? I think it'll be better if we talk about this later when we're not doing anything. Yeah, you're right. I still gotta practice what I preach. Nah, you were just checking up on me. Better safe than sorry, right? If I knew what was going on with me right now, I'd tell you right away. But something about this is so messed up, I can't put my finger on it. Guess we're dealing with the unknown like the good old days, huh? Something like that. <sighs> huh? A newspaper. 
Who would leave a newspaper lying around? I thought they were rare nowadays. What you got there, Sherlock Bones? It's the latest issue of Ebot Engineer. Someone must have left it here. Huh. Never thought you'd take an interest in newspapers. Usually you prefer fictional novels and manga over news. Uh, look at this. Starlet, huh? Never heard of that place. Talk about not so cheery, though. This report spells crazy. Reconstruction Starlight. A tragedy that happened there a couple years ago. For some reason, the town name brings a bell. Why, though? I don't remember anything like that. At least, not that I know of. I just don't get it. <sighs> Great. First my dreams, next I'm hallucinating, then I have a blackout, and now a murder story in my face. Why can't I just... If something happens to me and my wife, then we can't be there for fuck anymore. Can you do something for me? If we die, just be there for them and protect them. Please, help a brother out, will ya? Thanks. I owe you one. Old friend. Good. Good. Fred. You okay? You who hello Earth to Frisk. <sighs> hey kid, what's wrong? Frisk, you okay? Did you see something again? We were just looking at the paper and come on, buddy, talk to me. <sighs> Have you ever stopped for a moment and thought you knew everything about yourself? That you knew what makes up who you are. And then, all of a sudden... Kid? Your head starts pounding and these flashbacks appear so spontaneously. And then you start to feel like you don't know yourself at all. Like you're missing something important. I know you hate hearing the R word. So do I. But it's like my head has a reset power of its own. These memories or whatever keep playing on loop. And I can't make it stop. I hate this. I hate this so much. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I'll just shut up now. You know, you're probably hungry or something. Like I said earlier, hunger pulls tricks on you all the time. <sighs> nah, you don't need to be sorry. I know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm totally over all that. All you were trying to do was prove a point, so why should I be mad over the R word anymore? I mean, if anyone should be sorry, it's me. I kind of jumped the gun there. But you were right to say it's not the time to talk about this stuff. But at least we got some clues, right? Sure, we don't know jack about what's going on with you. And that's fine. But there's a start for everything. I suppose you're right, Sans. Hmm? And a good start to everything is a good meal. Mr. Grillby? Your order's ready, Frisk. I suppose your conversation was cordial while I was gone? Yeah, they kept me in line, Grilbs. No worries. Well, if there was anything wrong with my re-entry or your order, just say it. Don't spray it. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, there's nothing wrong, Mr. Grillby. I was just so psyched to eat your food that I couldn't think straight. Yeah, the kiddo's right. We all lose focus sometimes. Speaking of which, your friends are probably just as psyched to eat Grilb's famous birds as you are. I've bored you enough with my babbling already. Tell you what, why don't you kids start eating and play a few games for a while, and I'll come check on you later. I'll even review your group's scenario for next class. Uh, okay, sounds good to me. Just don't give Mr. Grillby a hard time while I'm gone, will ya? Behave yourself. Bless me. Since when did Sands and Frisk switch places? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you don't need to worry, kiddo. I'll play nice, trust me. I'll check in with you and your friends later, okay? <clears throat> it happened again. Just what the hell is going on? Just what is Frisk trying to tell me? I want to help them. Really, I do. But why is it so freaking hard to put two and two together? You know, I've noticed that the more motivated and invested on life you've become, the easier it is to discern your emotions and intentions. Really? How'd you figure? You were always adept at hiding your true emotions and motives, but you'd always leave subtle hints behind. So tell me, is there something about Frisk I'm not aware of? <sighs> right now it's not easy to explain. Even I'm still trying to process everything I witnessed so far today. Obviously, there's something only Frisk can sense at the moment. Hell, even they can't figure out what it is yet. But I do know this. They've been getting agitated ever since I brought them here to meet up with their friends. But that's not all. I've begun noticing several other signs, too. <sighs> right now, it's not easy to explain. Even I'm still trying to process everything I witnessed so far today. Obviously, there's something only Frisk can sense at the moment. Hell, even they can't figure out what it is yet. But I do know this. They've been getting agitated ever since I brought them here to meet up with their friends. But that's not all. 
I've begun noticing several other signs, too. It all started a while ago before we came inside. Frisk was freaking out over some weird person in a cloak across the street. Of course, I didn't see them, but nevertheless, it sparked my curiosity. I also knew Frisk's determination never steered them wrong. Not even once. Not that I know of, at least. I also began to notice they were having blackouts periodically. Once Frisk saw something strange, their mind would just shut down. Not to mention their eyes would dilate like they were going to fall unconscious. And just a few minutes ago, Frisk muttered something about these random bits and pieces of memories they were never even aware of before. It's almost like... like they... Even so, I can't help but shake this feeling that something bad's going to happen. But no matter what happens, I'm going to protect the kiddo. And I am going to get to the bottom of this. You're both going to get to the bottom of this. Yo, where are you in the game now? Can I see Frisk? Can I? Frisk noticed these signs first and relayed them to you. They look up to you and depend on you. So it's important that you both tackle this problem together. I can't assure you I have the most sage suggestions, but you should try to take it slow with them, Sans. The situation is just as new for them as it is for you. <laughs> take it slow. Right. <laughs> Then again, I am speaking to a regular ketchup-loving customer who's not very fond of making promises. My apologies. Nah, it's cool. You said take it slow with Frisk and figure things out, right? I wouldn't call this keeping a promise or anything like that, though. But if I was keeping a promise, let me be honest with you. I'm actually pretty damn good at it. Much, much later, around 6.15 p.m., after that headache and my talk with Dunkel, I pretty much forgot about that whole episode I had. Heh, <laughs> mission accomplished, right? But in the back of my mind, something told me that little episode wasn't over. Man, now I can see why thinking of a single strand of Uncle Pap's spaghetti can make understanding the world line easier. And that's pretty much the basic rundown of the space-time world line. Think about it. Uncle Pap's spaghetti. The very noodle that determines the changes in lifespans of virtually any living thing. Dude, Uncle Pub's gonna flip when he finds out how evolutionary his favorite dish is. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see that. His coolness factor will freaking skyrocket. Well, nothing out of the ordinary right now. Just hope I don't jinx myself. Ow! Wait, what the... Hmm. Uh, oh, man, that hurt. Oh. Oh, jeez. Holy crap. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to run into you like that. Are you okay? Please, don't report me for this. Wait, what? Yo, buddy, there's this thing we like to call watching where the hell you're going. You ever tried it? Because if you did, you'd already have the common sense not to run into my kid like you did. Y yeah. Sorry, man. This is so unlike me. Because I'm usually not one to be absent-minded or easily distracted or anything. But believe me when I say I didn't mean to ram into you guys like that. Nor was I intending to start a fight. What's his deal? Does he do that to everyone he meets? You feel a sense of uneasiness towards the man. But it's too soon to say if he's a friend or foe at the moment. Anyway, where are my manners when I need them? I freaked out so much I forgot to introduce myself. Name's Charles. Charles I. Ordwell. Author content manager, and editor of the Ebbet Enlightener. At your service. Nice to meet you both. I yeah, um, nice to meet you too, Mr. Ordwell. And don't sweat about the accident. Actually, now that I get to see you in person, there's something I've been meaning to... Uh, uh. I didn't know if Sans could sense it, but in this moment, something vividly ominous looked me straight in the eyes. Uh. <laughs> Sheesh! Someone let out a waft somewhere? Whoo wee! Someone light a candle or something, cause this place stinks! What? No way, man! It wasn't me, I swear! <laughs> Guess the royal guard dogs are doing their business in the woods. The smell from their stools will sneak up on anyone, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, my kid was about to ask if you were that guy that made a brief note in the papers about an incident in this abandoned town further down Mount Ebbett. So you know, huh? Yeah, it was me. That incident was no joke. That town, Starlet, was home to a tragic act of terrorism. We're talking an event equally horrific as the historic war between monsters and humans. Crazy, right? Before the whole mess, Starlet was a peaceful mountain town, 
filled with people who wanted to live as happy a life as possible, just like everybody else. It was considered a refuge for survivors of the war between monsters and humans, home for the new age. And most importantly, a place where people just wanted to be left alone. Most of the townspeople here didn't exactly agree with the aggressive mindsets and actions of their late generation. So it's safe to assume there were monster sympathizers amongst their population. Many years later, and two or three years prior to the monster's return to the surface, there was a series of murders in the shadows. Some people thought it was a warning, while others brushed it off. Neither side could get a grasp of what was going on. Eventually, the murders gradually worsened until it turned into a town-wide slaughter. Almost no one survived. Only few made it out of the attack to seek refuge elsewhere. Additionally, some survivors identified the culprits as a group of cloaked mystery people with magic powers. For all we know, they could have been part of some kind of cult that kills monsters and humans indiscriminately. So it ain't just Frisk. This guy knows about that cloaked mystery person too. But why? What the hell's so dangerous about this guy? Guess our mystery person's pretty crafty if I can't sense him. Yet. For some time now, I've tried everything to uncover more about Starlet. But the Ebon and Lightner staff expressed extreme discomfort towards the mass murder, that they decided to call off any and all further investigations and erase any record of that day. So in other words, this is a personal underground investigation for you, huh? Must be tough acting alone without compromise. Yeah, sure is. Anyway, here, take my business card. If you hear or see anything related to those cloaked guys, be sure to let me know. I always make sure I state the truth, and only the truth. Any clues you find will help. Anything to ensure that history won't repeat itself over and over again. I recall saying the Royal Guard Dogs did their business somewhere around here. You know, this reminds me of that one time I read something about a drunk man who got pooped on by the Royal Guard Dogs when he fell asleep after coming home from the bar one night. I guess you could say he became a total stinker, am I right? What? You can't be serious! We're still talking about the stools? Yup. And when he woke up and found out what hit him, he ran home to his mama and begged her to let him take a shower. But he forgot she evicted him months ago, so she slammed the door on his face and left him alone. Eventually, the smell got so bad he died. Then a horde of army ants ate up his corpse. So if you don't want to end up like that dead drunk man, run. <laughs> oh, God! No! Not that! The smell's after me! Help! 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 <laughs> Get dunked on, sucker. Sans? Hmm? I just want to say thanks for scaring him off. I really didn't like that guy. It was so weird. Hey, hey, don't sweat it, baby bones. I did always tell you I'd keep my eye sockets out for you. Trust me, I had a hunch he was shady the moment he showed up. You know I'd never leave you hanging. Especially when you're all shaken up and when your DT's telling you something screwy. Uncle and or dad's duty, you know? Besides, even though I still have yet to figure out what his deal is, I know he agitated your DT big time. Huh? Wait, you knew? Yep. Guy had something to hide. Judging by his actions, body language, and your agitated DT, it seemed like he might have had some form of concealed power of his own that a normal monster can't sense. Then again, could be wrong too. But that Ordwell kid was an idiot to think I wasn't a damn good judge of character. You don't always need magic to determine if someone's friend or foe. Ugh, I've had enough of people for today. I just want to go home. Heh. <sighs> I don't blame you after you had to deal with that BS. Whoa, um... But... <laughs> this old bag of bones might have just the thing from his bag of magic tricks that'll cheer you up. Really? Yep. For example, pass me your bag. Uh, okay, here. Now then. Watch closely, because this big old bag of bones is about to blow your mind. <laughs>